Hello, this is Channel 3 News with Megan Sinclair, Savannah Lane, Sloan Kelly, and Brooke Baxley. I'm Savannah Lane with Brooke Baxley, and here's our top story tonight. A 37-year-old mentally ill homeless man was beaten by six Fullerton police. This happened on July 5th around 8.30. We'll now go live to Fullerton with Sloan to get the full story. The police say that Kelly refused to stop when he, they approached him about stolen items from a car. He was tasered five times and brutally beaten until he was in a coma. Kelly's father, Ron Thomas, was so furious that no one was stepping up to tell the story to the media. Thomas with his side of the story. It hurts me so bad to know that this happened to my son and I wasn't there to help him. I saw the video that was taken by a local witness and he was calling me out my name for help over the sound of the, ta the taser. This makes me sick to my stomach that the police would go to the extent of putting a harmless man to a coma just because he refused to stop and talk to the cops. The picture I'm about to show you is very disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Ron then went to the hospital and sent this picture of Kelly to the press. Kelly was put on life support and died five days later. Fuel in the anger of this story was driving by the people. They came up with their own blogs, posted stuff on Facebook and YouTube of this incident. Because they were so angry at the Fullerton Police Department, the locals protested outside the police station. This just shows how much people believe in their rights. The six police officers went against the Eighth Amendment in the Constitution of Cruel and Unusual Punishment. This is why we made this a part of our Constitution. It is unacceptable. These people are supposed to be protecting us, not hurting us. They are taking their power and abusing it. It is a huge violation towards the U.S. Constitution. It clearly violates the Eighth Amendment, Magna Carta, and the English Bill of Rights. Here in Fairport Harbor, Ohio, Haley Butler plays on the varsity football team at her high school, Harding High. It is your right as a student, boy or girl, to be able to play on any sports team you want. Her basketball coach, Brandon Lauer, complimented her work ethic and her athleticism. He stated, there wasn't anyone better than her. She came in and worked harder than anybody else at the position. She definitely earned that job. Even her principal, Tom Fezikaz, says she's not only a great student, but a role model as well. Haley, how's your season going? I'm the girl out there, and they expect me not to know what I'm doing, and not to be able to hit, and not to know what I'm doing, and, and not to be able to hit like a guy. But after working hard, I guess it paid off. And it is true. Haley proves that even though she's a girl, she can still play on the varsity football team. In the Constitution, our 14th Amendment, is the Citizenship and Equal Protection Clause, which is exactly what it's called. It protects our right to equality as citizens of the United States of America. Even the Declaration of Independence set, states, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. Mary Wollstonecraft believed strongly in equality, especially between men and women. She also believed that everyone has their natural rights, and that during her time in France, pe women's rights were being violated, and she is one of the main reasons people have fought so hard for the democratic society that we have today. Ah! Ah!
guys hungry? Yeah. Thanks, Marie Antoinette. You're welcome. These croissants are very fresh and made them myself. Mmm, it's very good. Yeah. Hungry for some croissants? Try Marie Antoinette's. She was the first to bring croissants to France, where they soon became popular. Try them today. Five dollars a box at your local grocery store. Oh! Hello everyone. My name is Jordan Telgenhoff. Have you ever, ever wondered what it would be like if you couldn't be friends with your teacher on Facebook? Well, I'm here live in Missouri to discuss the Amy Hester Student Protection Act. Amy Hester is a girl who is secretly molested by her teacher who uses social media to take advantage of her. As a result of the crime, the Missouri legislator is considering a bill that would make social media contact illegal through teachers and students. I'm here with Megan Sinclair. Come up here, please. We're going to discuss how the bill would affect her life. Megan, how would this bill make you feel if it happened? Make me feel really sad. Why is that, Megan? Because my mom is a teacher and I wouldn't be able to be friends with her on Facebook. Well, there you have it, folks. If passed, the bill would violate the First Amendment of the Constitution, which states that people have freedom of speech. It would also not support the concepts of the Declaration of Independence. A philosopher named Voltaire believed that people should be able to freely express their views. The bill would also violate all these important ideas. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we had technical difficulties. <laughs> I'm Jordan Telganoff, live in Missouri. Peace out. We're now at the sandwich shop of Megan Sinclair's father, who is her teacher. Now, Megan can't be friends with Vincent on Facebook because he is a teacher. And Vincent, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel mad! Well, folks, there you have it. Vincent can't be friends with his daughter on Facebook, and that's just a lot of trouble. I'm live in Missouri. My name's Jordan Telgenhoff. Peace out. Hi, I'm Savannah Lane, and in January of 2009, Kelly William Bowler was convicted of two felonies. She was sent to jail for nine days is, and she has a five-year suspension, all because she used her parents' address to send her young children to school. Ohio Governor John Kosh lowers her convictions when he made this speech. <laughs> no one should interpret this as a pass. It's a second chance. The penalty could exclude her from certain economic opportunities for the rest of her life. So, today, I've reduced those felony conviction to what I think are most appropriate First degree misamendments. I'm here with Kelly talking to her about her, her trials. Kelly, how do you think those went? It's not fair. My children are young, too young to leave home alone after school. I need to get teacher my teacher's license to support them. John Kosh, the guy we showed earlier, her of the governor of Ohio lowered her sentence to a probation and 80 hours of community service. Kelly works as a part-time teacher's aide, and she hopes to obtain her teacher's license within the next year. The Constitution states in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by impartial jury of state. Kelly has the right to a fair trial until proven guilty. She should not have received the jail time and suspension. The Declaration of Independence states that he has made judges dependent on his will alone for the tenure of their offices and the amount and payment of salaries. The rights of the accused are all innocent until proven guilty. The Magna Carta and Justinian's Code also state right to a fair trial.